Hello, my name is Jessica Joyner and I am part of the Authentic Research Experience in Microbiology. We're really excited that you'll be taking part of our project today as part of your course. Before you go and sample the urban microbiome, there's some things we want you to keep in mind. That primarily is not to contribute our own bacteria or DNA into that sample. To avoid doing this, we recommend wearing a nice pair of gloves and tying your hair away from your face. While wearing the gloves, avoid touching your face and your hair, as well as your cell phone, to avoid reintroducing our DNA and bacteria into those samples. So enjoy going out and sampling that urban microbiome. So we are back and we are ready to go sample our urban environment. For the sake of this video, we are going to sample the light switch behind me. And before we do that, we have our sterile swabs, our swab solution, and then the 15 ml tube with two mils of the swab solution inside. So before you go sample, it's important to take one of the swabs and get it wet with the swab solution. You just need it damp so that it'll more effectively pull the bacteria off of that surface. When you're sampling the surface, you want to use an area about the size of your palm, which will be this entire light switch. So when I am sampling this, I'm going to roll the swab over the entire surface. Once it's done, that swab should look pretty filthy. You're going to drop it into the 15 ml tube with the swab solution and break off the remaining piece of wood. This is now trash and you can screw the lid back on for the next step. So we have the swab in the 15 ml Falcon tube with the swab solution and we're going to vortex it thoroughly to remove all of the material that is on the swab and put it into that swab solution. Once you've thoroughly vortexed the sample, you want to remove the cotton swab from the tube. To do this, you're going to press it hard up against the side of the tube and use, twist it and squeegee all of the liquid from the swab to leave as much of that liquid behind as possible. Swab will still be damp, but you should still have about two milliliters of swab solution in your tube. Okay, so with that two mils that are left in the tube, we are now going to transfer that to a small micro centrifuge tube. You can do this by setting a 1,000 pipette to the maximum volume of 1,000 and transfer the volume twice. Be careful as you are doing this that you're not going to bring the liquid all the way to the top of the pipette. So when you go to put it in the micro centrifuge, you're probably not the only group. So triple check that your tube is labeled with your group name and the sample site. When we go to put it into the centrifuge, we're going to do it for two minutes at the maximum speed. Before you hit start, make sure that that micro centrifuge is balanced. We don't want to break the machine. So for every sample that goes in, there should be another tube exactly opposite. The point of this step is to pellet or bring all of the bacteria and the debris in our sample down to the bottom of the tube. From that point, we can transfer it to the extraction kit. When you go to pour off the supernatant, you do it in one fluid motion. There will be liquid remaining behind. So close the tube and we're going to vortex the pellet and the remaining liquid to create a solution. If you don't have a vortex available, simply flick the tube. All we want to do is break up that pellet into the remaining liquid. We'll transfer all of the liquid now with the resuspended pellet into the first step of the MoBio extraction kit. I've set my pipette, it's a 200 pipette, to about 100. That should be about how much liquid was remaining, but be prepared for it to be a little bit more or a little bit less. And we're ready to begin the MoBio protocol to extract DNA. The first step of the MoBio kit is to add in their first reagent called C1. We're only going to add 60 microliters of C1 into the power bead tube. Once the 60 microliters is added into the power bead tube, gently mix it with your hand, and then we're going to put it into the vortex adapter. 
When you're putting it into the Mobile Vortex adapter, you want to make sure that the lid of the power bead tube is facing the center. Once the vortex step is complete, your sample is going to go directly into a micro centrifuge. Again, make sure it is balanced, and in the micro centrifuge, it will be there for 30 seconds at 10,000 G. Following the micro centrifuge, you're going to take the entire supernate and transfer it to a new micro centrifuge tube. As you are doing this, be careful not to clog your tip with one of the beads, but don't be afraid to put the tip close to the beads to make sure you do get all of the supernate. The next step is to add the C2 reagent into your sample. You are going to do 250 microliters of C2. Briefly mix it and now incubate this solution at 4 degrees for 5 minutes. You can do this either in a refrigerator or in an ice bath. Once the incubation at 4 degrees is complete, the sample then goes into the micro centrifuge tube for again another 30 seconds. When that centrifuge cycle is over, you'll have a nice pellet at the bottom of the tube. This is when you want to transfer about 600 microliters into the following tube. When you're doing this, avoid use touching the pellet. The next step is to add 200 microliters of the solution C3 into the sample tube. This is a fun step because throughout all this ex extraction, we're removing a lot of the impurities in the sample. When you add the C3 into the sample, you'll see your, all of the solution get this milky white. Now it goes on to 4 degrees for 5 minutes again and then in the centrifuge and after this step you'll see a really thick white pellet. Okay, at this step you should be able to see that white pellet now. It's really viscous and we want to avoid touching the pellet for this next step. You're going to transfer 750 microliters of the supernatant or the liquid above the pellet into a new tube. So now at this point in the protocol, we're to the step where we add C4 or step 14 in the experience user protocol. Solution C4 is in the large bottle and you're going to add 1200 microliters of this into that tube. To make this as few steps as possible, set your pipette to 600 microliters and transfer two volumes into your sample tube. The volume may look like it doesn't fit, but if you close that lid very carefully, you'll see it's perfect for this tube. Okay, once C4 is completely added into the tube, you want to gently mix this up, and the next step is we're going to another special tube for the Mobio kit. Now we're to the spin column filter. This spin column fits about 675 microliters, so as we transfer our sample onto the spin filter, we're going to do it in increments of about 675. Because there's more than 675 in the tube, this will probably take about three transfers. Once the sample is loaded, the spin column goes into the micro centrifuge. We're using a different type of tube for this step. So again, make sure that it is balanced with another spin filter on the opposite side. Once you take the spin filter out of the centrifuge, this is where you have to be very careful and practice your aseptic technique. We want to pour out the volume of liquid that went through the spin filter. So you open up the cap and grab just the lip of the spin filter and pour out that liquid being very careful not, not to touch the bottom of that spin filter. Place it back into your tube and you're ready to load the rest of your sample. Once you have loaded all of the sample onto the spin filter, you are now onto step 16 where we add 500 microliters of solution C5 to that spin filter. This is one of the steps in the Mobio kit that allows you to clean up the sample and make sure that there's no residual impurities with the DNA. The tube then goes into the centrifuge just like the previous steps. Once the C5 has completely passed through the spin filter, 
we want to do the same thing. We want to open up the lid, grab just the spin filter by the lip, and pour off the C5. Now on this step, we want to make sure that there's no residual chemicals left on that spin filter. So without adding anything to that spin filter, we're putting it back into the centrifuge for one minute. When you take it out of the centrifuge, you may be surprised to see that there actually was a fair bit of liquid remaining. Now, we're almost done. You want to open it up, and just like we have been practicing, grab the spin filter by just the lip of the spin filter and transfer to a new microcentrifuge tube. We are now at the final step. We are going to add 100 microliters of the last solution, C6, onto our spin filter. While you are doing this, you want to make sure that you're putting your tip very close to that membrane, but not actually touching that white part. Now, since this is your final sample tube, you want to make sure that it is completely labeled with your group name, sample site, and the date. This then goes into the centrifuge for 30 seconds at 10,000 G. The liquid has now passed through the spin filter, and what you have on the bottom is your final DNA for your sample. Before we're done, you want to open up the tube, again grab the spin filter by the lip, and throw it away. Make sure you're not throwing away your final sample tube, because this is now what we are going to go and sequence to figure out what the urban microbiome is of the area you sampled.